Today we continue our ultimate California coastal road trip. In this second video, we say goodbye to Pebble Beach and head north towards Elk, where it doesn't seem possible to live up to our new standards. Our heart is heavy as we depart Monterey, but it's soon lifted as we drive through Castroville, the artichoke capital of the world. Yes folks, they even have a sign to prove it. We follow our ways recommended route around the Bay Area traffic passing over the spectacular Richmond San Rafael Toll Bridge, which is over five miles long and ends near California's oldest prison, San Quentin, which is unfortunately running low on vacancies already being over 100% of its design capacity. We make a pit stop, in the name of science of course, at the Russian River Brewery in Windsor, where we attempt to debunk the urban legend that bottled versions of Pliny the Elder double IPA are much worse than draft. Fortunately for those of us who don't live in the neighborhood, it's absolutely not true. We split a burger to go with it, a big juicy masterpiece that could get by being much less tasty given how good the beer is here. After lunch, we enjoy a last half hour of relaxed highway driving before being on the narrow and winding roads for the next three days. Someday they're going to put a road here. We turn onto Route 128 to pass through the Anderson Valley wine, beer, and cider area before getting to the coast. If we had more time, it would have been great to sample some of the wares of this interesting appellation. But we have a date with some Michelin star dining we don't dare risk being late for. After a couple of hours of scenic driving from Windsor, we get to Elk and see the Harbor House Inn. It's like being dropped straight into a dream. The inn is perched right on the cliff's edge, so close to the waves that Poseidon himself might drop in to say hi. We settle into our cabin, the Ocean Song, which has a nicely updated living room and separate bedroom that share a fireplace, as well as a well-appointed bathroom, before settling down on our balcony, and relax with magnificent views of the private cove and large rocks, one of which had a hole that oddly looked like the outline of famed Finnish composer Jean Sibelius. We can't possibly be the only people to notice this. At 5.30, we sat down to enjoy the tasting menu at their Michelin-rated two-star restaurant that takes the phrase local food to an entirely new level. Each course is a delicate work of art, and we're trying hard not just to swallow them whole like the heathens that we are. Respectfully, we think the Michelin folks got this one wrong. Two stars means that it's worth a detour. We rate this the full three stars because this place is definitely deserving of a special trip. Our favorite dish was their new tuna course, However, the sea urchin roe on the fried mushroom was a close second. Rockfish, abalone, ultra-fresh salad, kohlrabi, and dessert courses rounded out the delicious menu. The wine pairings also raised the bar for curated pairings you normally experience. The meal was pricey, but will be a happy memory for years, or until the next time we visit, soon hopefully. The next morning, after our stunning and delicious breakfast that was brought right to our cabin, we walked down to the private cove where some of the prior evening's meal was scavenged. You don't often get to walk over such a pristine beach, marveling at the small moss waterfall, the rock pass-throughs, and the pristine waters in the area. Warning to you kids, don't use a kelp stock as a bullwhip. Later, it's north to Mendocino, a town so quaint it could be the set of a coastal fairy tale. We hop on our bikes and take a loop right through town and along the Point Mendocino Trail. Picture amazing coastal views, cottages with more personality than any Disney theme park, and cliffs that maliciously invite us to stray into the ocean on any false turn. We wish this trail was longer. Whether you hike or bike this short trail, you're in for a real treat. So this would be the Mendocino Coast. There's some uh, biking trails, hike, biking, hiking trails right along the cliffs. So. If you had these earphones on like I do, where I can hear what Kathy's saying, the cussing is impressive. It was scary. <laughs> uh, apparently riding next to a cliff on dirt is not Kathy's forte just yet. It's, it's coming though. In the afternoon, we ride through Big River Estuary State Marine Conservation Area on Big River Road, through its redwood forests along the Big River. We were feeling like world-class athletes until we realized that we're on e-bikes probably set on too high of an assistance level. What a gorgeous ride, although we were a bit disappointed not to see any wildlife in what felt like an isolated and protected forest. We pick up the ingredients from the local market for an appetizer dinner to enjoy a ride on our scenic balcony that evening and enjoy a spectacular sunset over the Pacific. We were even visited by a local deer to welcome us. This place, far from anything we'd call a city, had enchanted us. For the second time this trip, 
We were sad to leave, but looking forward to the sights that we'd see along the coast highway as we started our journey back south towards home. On our next video, you'll see a chapel that was probably built by forest elves and an old fort definitely built by Russians and Alaskan natives before exploring Half Moon Bay from the always swanky Ritz-Carlton. Subscribe if you don't want to miss a thing. Thanks for watching.